All right, today, before I get started, I've got to cut up some clay to add to my clay, or soft clay. Yeah, so I'm going to do this for a few minutes, and I'll be right back. Time to play with some clay. All right, I'm going to smooth the skin of the horse. I'm going to use a Scotch Brite to uh, smooth the skin of the horse, and uh, in conjunction with using uh, Ronsonol lighter fluid. Uh, the reason I use Ronsonol instead of some other chemical is because it's very friendly to the foundry. Uh, the foundries use Ronsonol uh, to smooth uh, the waxes that they get out of uh, the molds that they make. And uh, it, it other chemicals react differently, so uh, it can be uh, detrimental to the uh, finished uh, bronze. So what I do is I take the Ronsonol and I uh, squirt a little bit on the clay. That gets it started softening, and then I put a little bit on the tip of my uh, scotch Brite pad that I've cut down in size, and I'm using a rubber glove to uh, keep my hands from getting into the chemicals. And then I just uh, use this to smooth out the skin of the horse. It really doesn't take much to do that. You don't want to press too hard. You just want it to smooth out the uh, marks left by your sculpting tool. Sorry, I keep hitting the camera because it's sitting right next to my arm here. And it's uh, sometimes hard to work <laughs> when you got that against your arm. Now I'll go back over it with a soft brush to uh, sort of take down even the uh, scrapes of this Brillo. I'm going to have to uh, take the horse off its stand and uh, work underneath the horse. But I'll do that uh, later. I uh, squirt a little bit of the uh, lighter fluid in this ramekin. 
and uh, Jeff's ramekin. I keep it in my studio because it's handy to have for this very purpose. And then I just go over it with the, the brush and it softens it up even more. The kind of finish I want to get on this uh, finished bronze will require a smooth skin on the horse. Okay, I'm back on the base. And uh, got to work things out here. Okay, I thought of maybe attaching a buffalo skull on the on the ground and not a complete skull, a skull that's been broken up in over the years and uh an old skull. This could be missing the uh nose of the uh, skull. A lot of times you'll, if you come across an old skull, it's broken up because of all the animals that were feeding on it and uh, just time. The bones just fall apart. So I'm just going by a photograph I've got of an old skull and uh, I keep dropping my clay I used to own a buffalo skull they can be really big I'm going by a photograph I got online of a guy holding a buffalo skull and uh the width between the uh, edge of the horns uh, pretty much went from his shoulder to shoulder. I don't want to make it dominant because it's not the uh, focus of the sculpture, but it just adds to the story. The disappearance of the buffalo. Now this is the eye socket here. And I don't have to worry about it being perfect because like it would have all deteriorated eventually the bone would go into turn to dust but I was trying trying to get some kind of the uh, anatomy of the skull Okay, I gotta get the camera lined up here. <sighs> the uh, 
nose broke broke off right where the uh, seam of the nasal bone was. Now, if you were ever hiking out in the wilderness in the prairie or something like that and you came across an old buffalo skull and it had a hole right here where the brain would be knocked out of the skull, that would be an Indian killed buffalo because what they would do is they would take the uh, brain out of the uh, skull and use it to can the hide of the uh, buffalo. Each animal has just enough brain matter to tan its own hide. So I'll be right back. I got a message. Okay, now I need, I need to decide where to put the skull. If I even put it on here. Actually, that's a good place for it right there. That's a real good place for it. Now what I got to do is uh, anchor this in place and make it easy to cast. So I'm going to put some clay underneath here. Just to solidify its position on the on the base what it does is just adds to story and uh, if I was to write a story this would be done when we with words instead of uh, clay I was used to live up on the mountains on the mountainside or at the base of the mountain here in the valley. This whole area used to be a major hunting ground for the uh, Native Americans during the 1800s. And, uh, and, on, and on before, long before, probably for thousands of years, living on the mountainside in a rental. And when I first moved here back in the 1980s and, uh, I was walking in the on the prairie below the mountain near where an airport is right now. There's a small private airport here in the valley. And uh, I came across a buffalo's horn, the shell that would fit over the uh, bone of the buffalo horn. This is this isn't the shell. This is just the horn. It's long since uh, fallen off or deteriorated, and the only part left is the bone under the uh, horn itself. And uh, I found the shell of that horn, and uh, it was kind of cool to find that to imagine the thousands of buffalo that would roam where we live now in the valley here. The idea for putting the skull on the base came to me last night. Um, I was just crawling into bed and I was thinking about the base and I was trying to think what I can, what I can do to spark it up a little bit. And uh, this occurred to me. All right, everybody, this is going to be it for tonight, and uh, I'll figure out what I'm going to do on this side tomorrow. And uh, then I've got to work on his hand and his arm. Uh, i got to get that ready to hold the uh, reins, which I'll uh, sketch in for the uh, boundary to know, uh, to see how I'm going to have all that. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Good night, everybody.
If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. It really would help me. Also, check out the link below this video. It will take you to a review of my nine instructional videos that could be very helpful to you if you're thinking of sculpting. Good night, everybody.